This video will take you through the professional registration process for IT technicians as an individual, including creating a BCS Secure login. Corporate membership holders should view our other video that takes you through the relevant steps. If you are not a BCS member already, then the first step in the self-assessment is to click the Create BCS Secure Login button on the top right. Existing members should click Login via the BCS website. This will take you to the Create BCS Login page, where you will be able to fill in your user information. Fields with a red asterisk next to them are required. You must set your password at this stage and enter a home address. Work addresses are entered at a later stage. Once you have entered your details correctly, you will see a confirmation message and then be required to log in once more. Existing members, once logged in, will be shown their personal details to ensure they are correct. You can only make changes in the BCS Secure area. Once logged in, you will be taken to the dashboard where you can begin your application. On the dashboard, you will always be able to see and change your communication preferences for RIT Tech, along with whether or not your details appear on the public register. One of the benefits for people and potential employers is to be able to see you have RIT Tech and to appear on the public register. This is set to ON by default. If you wish to be excluded from the register, then this is also an option. However, it is highly recommended that you allow your details to be listed in order to get the full benefit of registration. You also have the option to receive further marketing material from RIT Tech and whether your details can be shared with third parties. If you are happy with your preferences, then go ahead and begin a new application by clicking the button on the top right. On this page, you can double check the details of your membership. If all the details below are correct, you can choose to save and continue. Saved applications can be returned to at any time when logged into the website. For letters or details sent via post, you have the option here to supply a work address. You will receive the option to select your preference for a home or work address at a later stage. You can also choose to skip this step if it does not apply. This first part of the assessment will deal with your work experience. You will initially be asked to enter the number of years experience you have in your field, with one year minimum being required to complete the application. Below this are a series of questions that will cover different areas of your experience and how you operate within a business environment. You should read each statement through thoroughly and consider how you work on a daily basis, choosing the option which most applies to the way you do your job. Answers do not need to be exact and you shouldn't worry that every single word fits your own experience. Simply choose the option that most closely matches. If you receive the following warning message, then you will have one more chance to read through each statement and alter your answer. It's worth reading these carefully, as getting a second warning message will result in you not being able to complete the registration at this time. In this second part of the assessment, you will be asked to choose your specialist area and provide more detail around your technical skills. These areas will not match job titles, but rather group into job families. By hovering over the question mark next to each area, you will receive a further explanation as to what each area means. Take some time to read the descriptions to decide which fits your own job best. Clicking on a tick box next to each technical area will drop down a further list of questions for you to read through and decide if it's a fair description of the day-to-day -day work you do. If it is not, then you can click on the Show All button and return to the list to choose a different option. Once you are happy with your choice, you must now rank yourself against each of the statements. These assessments are not related to how often you perform the task, as each job has different requirements, but how you work when you are faced with the scenario as described. As with the previous section, you may find a warning message is shown, in which case you will get one more chance to read over the statements once more and revise your answers. On this next page, you should supply three statements that support and reinforce the answers that you ticked in the previous section. They are limited to 1,000 characters and should provide the evidence that you are doing the job that you have filled out the form for. The question marks above each text field can offer more information on what is being sought, and you are free to save the application and return to it later if you require more time. This information will be sent on to your supporter during the completion of your application. On the supporter page, details should be supplied for a line manager or other person of seniority who knows you well and will be in a position to verify your application. All the details you have previously filled out will be sent to the supporter for their approval, and you can preview what they will see by clicking the red button near the top. The supporter should not be a friend or relative of the applicant. 
If you know your supporter's BCS membership number, then you can fill this in here, but it is not a requirement at this stage. You will now need to complete the details on the BCS membership page by first accepting the membership declaration. These include compliance with the Institute's charter, bylaws and regulations, and also the BCS Code of Conduct. You can click on each of these to review them before accepting. By signing up, applicants agree to conduct themselves in a manner that is professional and acceptable in the workplace. The final two options are communication preferences, and you should read each to decide which option is best for you. At this stage, you will now be asked to provide payment details in order to complete your application. If you have a voucher for a discount, then you can add this here. A payment summary is provided, and if you are happy with this, you can proceed to the payment page seen here. Once payment is complete, you will proceed to a confirmation page that will include your payment reference. You may now press to complete the application. Your completed application will be sent to your supporter for approval and you can view the progress from this page. Should your supporter details change or they are not available, then you can come back and amend your application. It is the responsibility of the applicant to ensure these details are up to date. Once your supporter has approved your application, the page will update to reflect this progress, indicating that BCS are now reviewing the application. You can log in and check the status of your application at any time. Finally, once approved by BCS, you will receive an email informing you of your successful application. Logging back into the website, you will see a number of new options. Your name will be visible on the public register, and by entering your registration number and clicking search, you will be able to see it as it will appear to other people. You are also able to download your certificate, which can be printed and placed on display. You can also download digital badges to place on your website or other services such as LinkedIn. Finally, you can download the previous quarterly newsletters in order to keep up to date with the world of professional registration. Good luck with your application and welcome to RIT Tech.